So hey, John, can you hear me okay? Yes, you can. Sure can. Terrific. Well, I want to welcome everybody to today's session. I'm really excited about it. I had a chance to review the slides uh, in a lot of detail over the last week or so. And I'm really excited to, to hear both Beverly and Terry this afternoon. It's going to be a terrific, terrific session. I think everybody in the line is going to get a ton out of it. Uh, we're today talking about the power of real-time social media market, marketing, which is a brand new book from Beverly Macy and Terry Thompson that uh, came out from McGraw Hill, and we're really excited to have them on the line today. Before I introduce, um, before I introduce Beverly and Terry, I want to go through some quick logistics. I want to give you a sense of, of uh, how you can communicate with us today, give you some background on who awareness is, and, uh, and then just introduce Terry and, and Beverly and go from there. My name is Mike Lewis. I'm the uh, Vice President of Sales and Marketing here at Awareness. On behalf of everybody here at Awareness, I'd like to welcome you to today's session. Like I said, we're really excited about it. Um, if you'd like to communicate with us today, we encourage you to communicate as much as you want. We want to be comments with you. We want to take your questions. The easiest way to do that is to go to Twitter and ask us any questions you'd like using the hashtag pound awareness eight. All in word, we'll be monitoring that feed throughout the session. Any questions that you have, I'll be sure to ask Beverly and Terry at the, at the end of today's session. If you have any technical support issues whatsoever, uh, we do have a producer from WebEx on the line today who's here to help you with any support issues. There are a couple things you can do. First of all, if you're in the WebEx event center, in the upper navigation on the right hand side, there's a new button there that says help. Feel free to use that help button with any technical issues you have. Also, you can go right to the Q&A box on the right hand side, submit any technical questions, and someone from WebEx will be sure to get back to you ASAP. So I'll talk to you a little bit about the book. Uh, if you want to, if you want to buy the book before or after today's session, we encourage you to do so. Uh, you can go to that, that Amazon shortened link right there, click right through these slides and you'll be able to after by the way to everybody, so you'll have this link. Uh, immediately following the session. We're also going to be giving away five books to five, to five people who ask the best questions on Twitter. So start asking questions now. Um, we'll be monitoring, like I said, throughout the entire session. And at the end, Beverly and Terry are going to help us pick uh, five winners that are going to receive a book, a book from awareness um, right after we, we finish today's session. So ask a lot of questions, get a free book. It's just as simple as that. Let me tell you a little bit about awareness. We, we have a lot of new folks on the line today, um, and, and one of the things that, that inevitably happens at the end of our sessions is people say that the session was terrific, but what the heck does awareness do? So right at the very beginning, we to cover that to see the sense of who we are, what our biases are, and why we're doing these, these webinars every other week. We're a creative little product, a social media management product called the Social Marketing Hub that allows marketers to connect all their social media channels in one place, aggregate the information, and, uh, and, and report it on everything we're doing across multiple social media channels to one centralized location. Uh, we partner with a lot of digital agencies. You can see some of our bigger clients on the left-hand side. Uh, and the car just came to market about a year ago. We have a ton of customers using it. We get some great feedback. And if you have any information, I'd like to share some with you. The reason we developed the product is we get a lot of common complaints from marketers. First thing we've heard is I'm completely overwhelmed. Social media is only a percentage of my job, and it requires a lot of my time and resources to be effective. The other thing I've heard is that I need help proving the value, that you know, I'm at a point in my career where, where I'm referring to someone who doesn't really believe in social media, they want to see the value, and I need help reporting and figuring out what the right metrics are to make things work for me. They also want to get strategic, that they're doing a lot of tactical programs and want to become more strategic about what they're doing with social media. And finally, they feel like they're losing control. There's a ton of channels out there. Um, there's a lot of comments to respond to. There's a lot of people inside your organization who are doing different things on social media. And they need some help controlling everything and making sure that simple things like managing logins and passwords are under control. And that's what we developed the social marketing hub. And as I mentioned, the logic connects all your channels in one place, gives everybody in your, in your organization, both internally and externally, who are, who are, who are publishing out and, and reporting on your social media channels, one place to log in so you're not sharing passwords. makes it very, very easy to do that. If you want some more information on that, contact me directly. Again, my name is Mike Lewis. My email is mlewis at awarenessnetworks.com. You can find me on Twitter under the handle Boston Mike, um, and, and just drop me an email. I'd be happy to set up some time to talk to you about it in more detail. Um, I'm just going to skip this slide and tell you that we actually have a live demo coming up February 2nd at 2 p.m. So you go to tidyorl.com slash hub demo. You can sign up. You can, you can get a demo of, a, of the hub, and it's featuring our, our, um, our presenter, Will Eisner, who's our director of product marketing here. So, Hopefully, you have some time and, and can come back to that. With that, I'd like to take a minute to introduce uh, Beverly and Terry to, uh, 
So everybody can write there in one second. Just gonna transfer the ball over to Terry. Terry, you should have it in one second. Sorry about that. So you got it? You got it now? So, you actually gave it to Beverly. Go ahead and give it to Terry. Sorry about that. There we go. Don't worry. All right, cool. Uh, really excited to have Beverly and Terry on the line today. Beverly is the CEO and co-founder of Gravity Summit. And if you're around, if you're in the UCLA area, February 22nd, that's when the next Gravity Summit is going to be. So definitely check it out online uh, and sign up for it. Um, really what they focus on is very good at businesses using cutting-edge social media tools. And she's a professional speaker. She's cons- she can consult. She spent 14 years at Xerox. Uh, and, of course, is, is uh, one of the co-authors of the book, The Power of, social, the Power of Real-Time Social Media Marketing along with Terry Thompson, who's a creative director of marketing, media, and innovations at Gravity Summit, specializing in social media strategy, new technology, and entertainment. Uh, she serves on the innovation teams at Innovation Media and IPG, where she scoured the growth for emerging platforms, and this, I think, is really cool. She's media director for, for YouTube, for Bono's Red Campaign, and uh, has had clients in a multitude of different industries. She's won a ton of different awards for marketing campaigns. They're both very proud of LA, so I'm really excited to have them on the line. Uh, Beverly and Terry, thanks so much for being here today. Mike, thank you so much. What a great introduction. Um, Terry, we can go ahead and skip the stage so people can come back and look at it. Um, we are delighted to be here, and we've got a lot of great information to share with everybody. What we wanted to do was kind of take you through the new book that was just released on January 7th, and kind of tell you a little bit about each chapter, and then we wanted to do a drill down to um, two different chapters. One is Chapter 3, The Power of Conversation and Engagement. Terry will take that piece. And one of the highlights of our book is eight very uh, detailed and exclusive case studies. And one of those case studies is the USA Today. And we will drill down a bit on that case study. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, you can see that the book is uh, something that people have said to us, I really need this book. Um, as Mike was saying in his introduction, there's a lot happening in social media. People are very, very excited about it, but it's a lot of overwhelm as well. So we wanted to write a book that we would read, and um, we wanted to write a book that was designed for people like you that are on this call today, senior executives, advertisers, marketers, and business leaders, um, from business, government, nonprofit, et cetera. Next slide, Terry. Um, so we start off with the idea that there really is a new communications landscape, and the book talks about um, a thorough understanding of what real-time social media actually is. What do we mean by that? Real-time is really the ability to... Um, to anybody, any place, anywhere, any time. And we call that the natural lens, meaning that we are all viewing the world through a, an immediacy that um, we've never had before. Um, conversation is the new currency. This is how uh, uh, companies are going to be measured in the future. is not so much on the data that they produce related to their customer relationship, marketing, etc. They're going to be measured on... How well are they talking to their consumers? How well are they talking to their partners and suppliers? Um, and we also talk about reviews of the new advertising. Um, the world of Yelp and uh, Groupon and everything else tells us that people, and studies have proven this as well, that people um, trust and rely on each other much more than they trust and rely on the brand messaging. So I am going to go to the restaurant that my friend says is really a great restaurant, more than I'm going to go to the restaurant because I saw an ad on TV. And that is changing the paradigm. It's changing the paradigm for advertisers and marketers. It's changing the paradigm for consumers, et cetera. And as I said, we focus on eight uh, case studies. We end the book with a look into the next lens and talk about social gaming and social and uh, virtual currency and the mobile platforms. Next slide. So chapter one, as I said, really uh, begins with uh, kind of a definition, and we like to start off with three really key facts. Um, consider the following. One tweet, a message with no more than 140 characters, turns into a $33 million-plus disaster aid recovery uh, effort. 
This is actually a real story that we talk about in the book. It's the story of the American Red Cross, the State Department, and a mobile company. Um, and all of us will remember the Haiti uh, earthquake and the 90999 code, which really revolutionized fundraising forever. Um, we also talk about a um, transportation system, kind of boring, um, Orange County Transportation Authority in uh, in Orange County, California, uh, just another government agency, but they went on YouTube and started putting out their, um, holding their uh, uh, public meetings, and lo and behold, people from Russia and Europe and Asia were joining. And, um, and then finally, we uh, also talk about struggle competitors who thrive by sharing customers versus trying to steal each other's customers. We also really wanted this to be a global view, so we have some um, global voices from China, India, Africa, Turkey, South America, and really speak to the digital natives and the global youth bulge. There are some really um, astonishing facts that are going on right now about how the world's population is shifting. 50% of the world's population is under the age of 30. 50%, that is over 3 billion people is under the age of 30, and most of those people are in Africa, Asia, South America, uh, and the Middle East. Next slide, Terry. And uh, this is where I pick up with about describing Chapter 2, the why now. We got that question quite a bit in doing our research for our book, but we wanted to explain it so readers can understand the impact of social media because the way we communicate really has changed forever. It's not a fad. It's not going away. We put it into a historical and, te and technological context so you can see the seismic shift occurring in communications and content distribution. And we answer what it means on an individual level as well as a global level. And so why is social media suddenly everywhere? And some friends say that they woke up and all of a sudden it seemed like everybody was speaking a different language. So ultimately, we want to be able to harness the perfect storm for your brand to break through the noise and rise to the top or anybody's brand. And that perfect storm involves uh, three things. One is the free communication platforms like YouTube and Twitter, a global recession that's happening obviously around the world, and the digital natives. And those are under 30, as Beverly mentioned, who are driving this technology adoption. So that's the perfect storm that's hitting everybody. And then Chapter 3 is the one we're going to be going into in more detail a little bit later. We're going to be looking at one of the conversation strategies. But for now, I just so you know that Chapter 3 is we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of listening in real time. That chapter covers how to gather actionable intelligence from conversation clusters, the ways to create smarter customer relationship management, marketing communications, and enterprise ecosystems. And all of this results in authentic and successful consumer engagement. In, um, yes, thank you, Terry. In Chapter 4, we really then try to dive down into some real-time marketing strategies. And um, again, going back to what Mike was saying earlier, a lot of people have jumped into social media with tactics, i.e., let's get our Twitter page up or let's get our Facebook page going. And, not, and now they're backtracking to say, you know, this really needs to fit into a, a strategy, our competitive strategy. It needs to fit into our integrated marketing strategy. Um, social media is another channel. It is not a standalone event. It needs to be integrated into the entire picture. Um, one of the things we talk about in our uh, Chapter 4 is competition is fierce in this global economy. That's not, a new, that's not new information. Um, but social media is, you know, gives us the edge, and it also can take the edge away. Um, somebody else can suddenly pop up on another part of the planet and take your customers. So how do we uh, deal with that in real time? Um, the old definition strategies and planning methods are being redefined. But it's not necessarily going away. Um, one of the things I'm very passionate about in teaching at UCLA is um, – I love Michael Porter, for instance, and many of you will know who Michael Porter is from um, Harvard Business School when he talks about competitive strategy. His book was written in 1980. Um, what he says still applies, but we need to redefine it in this real-time environment so we talk about things like that. 
And we also talk about this, uh, the era of openness. This is very daunting to um, organizations that will say, well, we're very highly regulated, we're, we're pharmaceutical, we're government, we're scientific, et cetera. And, um, and yet we're seeing some big breakthroughs in this area. But how is that happening? And how are co companies and enterprises and organizations dealing with this new openness that has suddenly hit? Um, we dive into specific strategic considerations. We talk about real-time market leadership. We talk about um, jumping in and, and learning and becoming educated. Um, corporate education is critical at this juncture. This is a change management process. This needs to be taken as seriously as Six Sigma or ERP or SAP. This is not something for the faint of heart. Social media is not for the faint of heart um, in the enterprise. We um, then talk about the collaborative enterprise. What does that mean? Um, companies have been saying for a long time that they would like their various uh, teams to be able to work with one another online. Um, we highlight EMC, which is a big, gigantic technology company in Boston. We highlight EMC in the book about how they are actually doing that and um, in the collaborative enterprise. Then we speak about real-time search. What does this mean to all of the SEO and SEM and, and all of the search engine optimization and marketing that everybody's been doing? What does the new real-time search mean for us as consumers, but then more importantly for you as a parent, um, how, how do you get your your name and your your word out there in this real time uh, search environment, and how do you strategize around that? How do you use those strategies? And finally, we talk about new social learning platforms. Um, education is undergoing a dramatic change with not just online collaborative online and using social platforms like um, Facebook Connect, et cetera, which means some amazing things happening in the learning environment, both in a corporate environment as well as an academic environment. And the last piece about this chapter is we say fail fast and fail forward. Get in, do something, don't be afraid. If it doesn't work, you've got plenty of time to recover and keep moving. Next slide. And um, th these are the case studies, our exclusive case studies that we talk about, our lessons in leadership. Um, American Red Cross, uh, one tweet turns into $33 million. Actually, it's now $40 million in Haitian relief. USA Today, publishing in real time. EMC, real time in the enterprise. Orange County Transportation Authority, transforming government. Wahoo's Fish Tacos, which is a favorite out here in California. Um, it's a fast food chain, but it is a very unique fast food chain, and they've done some amazing things through community building and extreme sports. Mazda North America, the Roxy Theater, and Direct TV and Customer Relationship Management. And then um, we do cover analytics and measurement. Now, we, de we debated about this quite a bit, whether to include this, because this is m moving and changing so rapidly. We thought anything we write is going to almost be outdated. So what we really wanted to do here is take a 30,000-foot uh, level view of analytics and measurement and talk about what to measure, what that m measuring conversation versus measuring data um, how to get data and adjust strategies in real time, and what is this new social CRM? So we spend some time speaking about that. And the last uh, chapter is what we call the next lens. So let's gaze into the future. Let's look at the, um, this is not an end, but another beginning. We talk about something called the social media dream life, which is including um, um, augmented reality and uh, 3D, et cetera. We talk about mobile and social, uh, the social mobile and social tablet universe, social gaming and virtual currency. No book can be written today without including there's an app for that. So we talk about that, and then we go into the next lens. Now Terry's going to take you through the um, conversation chapter. Thank you, Beverly. As you mentioned, we are going to be looking at Chapter 3, and obviously we can't go through the entire chapter because of our time here, but we are going to look at it listening in real time. Now, um, again, uh, something's bear repeating. 
Listening is critical. There was a conversation taking place in real time about your brand, about your industry, and about your competition. And the co the conversation is taking place with you or without you. And that conversation strikes a lot of fear in people's hearts because, you know, there's no control. What if somebody says something awful? What if, you know, what if even your own uh, social media team says something inappropriate? And what we try to do in our book here is mitigate that fear. Granted, you can't control the conversation, but we describe how it can be managed. And that's where conversation can empower. As you know, listening is the fundamental element of any successful social media campaign. It is the core of conversation. So we help you find out where conversations are taking place about your brand and guide you into deep listening, like into the second and third layers of listening. Because after all, conversation engages. We want to lead you to the voice of the individual and the voice of the community. Now, um, Beverly and I embarked on a journey of discovery while writing this book. We found some brilliant marketing perspectives that we had to share. And one of those was from Marker Media. They are a social media branding boutique here in L.A. And they call it the cult of conversation. Now, um, we want to bring this to you because it shows how social media has created the shift from the cult of personality to the cult of conversation. Now, the cult of conversation was where people were mysterious and inaccessible, like behind the velvet rope. People were chasing an image that brands push on consumers and push you into thinking you have to be a certain way in order to be happy. But now we're looking at the cult of conversation. The velvet rope and the wall are all gone. It's about access and openness and looking to one's friends to find out what's important. Because conversations with friends validate decisions. It, you know, reviews are the new advertising. So it's not about image. It's about conversation. Now, the cult of conversation has three foundational elements. Think of it like a little bench with three legs. One of those legs is conversation. Another is connection. And another is community. The conversation, let's take a look at conversation. Now, the anchor point of social media is conversation. What are you going to say? How are you going to say it? Are you a semi-social personality? Or are you a social personality? By personality, we're talking about the personality of the brand. If your brand were a person, what would it be and how would it talk? What would be the personality description? Because on social platforms, we're talking about conversation and personality. Would you be a semi-social personality, just push, pushing out messages for your brand? And that would, I think that's only 50% effective. Or will you be fully social, where you're taking the time to listen and respond, creating that 100% full circle of engagement and communication? Carrie, can I, um, can I chime in real quick on the, on, on the uh, social back on the slide right before this one, just real quick. Um, just wanted to make a point here related to personalities and um, who your, what your social ID is or your social presence is. Um, interesting note, uh, we were talking about this at the event that I was at on Monday. Um, Carl Jr. does a really good job of, has done a very good job of, of identifying what their social voice is. A lot of other brands have as well, but I'll mention this one because it's kind of fun. And Beth, who runs the social media, uh, division up there talks about this. Beth is a mom, um, and, uh, a nice, kind of a suburban mom and lives at home, uh, and, and works at, 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 uh, Carl Jr., et cetera. But the social personality is a hungry young guy. And they have identified exactly who this person is, what they like, what they do, what the demographics are, what the person, uh, what the social ID, um, what kind of music, what kind of uh, books the person reads or media it consumes. And um, I think the idea here is to combine this uh, social uh, voice and social personality so that when it enters the conversation, it is consistent. And I just wanted to make that point. 
Thank you, Beverly, and that's exactly right. You know, when I was at a media agency, we did whiteboards, and we had uh, a new product we were launching, and we gave all the, the product attributes. So that is exactly right, especially in on social platforms. So the other one of the other legs is connection. Conversation style will determine the connections that are made. Now, if your goal is to do some crowdsourcing for creative ideas, the conversation is probably going to be in a little bit more casual style. But if your connections, if you want to make a business development or sales lead connections, then the conversation is going to be you're going to have a more professional tone. If you want to create associations, whether it's for hobbyists or other professional associations, then those will take a different tone in order to get the connections that you want. Now, community arises out of meaningful conversation and connection. Community becomes a place where these two elements flourish and grow. That's where you want it to take place. Community must be fed with new meaningful conversations. We know that. And within that community, stronger connections are made that make it an engaging environment for participants. You want it to be a place where people feel comfortable to come in and talk and chat and make it a place where they want to return. So community becomes self-perpetuating. You have meaningful conversations, create strong connections, and a dynamic community. And that's where you want your brand to be in the middle of all of that. Now, I think marker media really hit on this easy-to-understand way to explain to clients. Sometimes when you have to sell these ideas up the chain, it really is helpful to have some of this um, philosophy, marketing philosophy, and strategy. And this is the type of information we bring to our readers in our book. Now, Beth, I think the next one is you. Okay, well, let's go back and stay on the uh, slide ahead uh, for a second. So I just want to say a few more things about this because this is becoming um, in both the consulting and advisory work that I do uh, individually and that Terry does and also things that we're going to be talking about at Gravity Summit in February. This is becoming a very big area for businesses as they um, are becoming more mature in the social channels. So in the very beginning, you go out and find your you go out and find where people are talking about you and your brand. And you find them on forums or blogs or in YouTube or on Twitter or wherever it is. And then you learn how to enter into the conversation. And Terry did a very nice job about talking about the cult of conversation. We love Marco Media. I think they do some really good work. Um, there's other companies that are doing this as well. We're hearing a lot of conversation around um, storytelling and getting back to really understanding the art of conversation. And Terry was, um, Terry, I'm going to uh, keep your heart a little bit, but Terry was adamant when we were writing this chapter that, you know, we've lost the art of conversation. Um, everything is so fast and so um, so serious that sometimes we've lost the ability to really listen and engage. So what brands are finding is that they enter into the social channels, and they just push out their uh, press releases or whatever. It's not really a conversation. And I can't tell you how many marketing managers, product managers, and executives say to me, well, what do we talk about? And it's really kind of funny because um, here's a brand that has millions and sometimes billions of dollars spent on one-way messaging, and when it comes to actually engaging in a conversation, it feels daunting. So we want we really wanted to spend some time on this in the book and also just in, in this conversation with you guys today because this is really a challenge for companies. So what we try to do is say, you know, there's a lot of content that companies may have that can be repurposed into the social channel. And um, and that's one beginning point to look at with conversation. So there's two things. There's entering into the conversation and then there's the concept of engagement. So let's fast forward and say that now you're Coca-Cola and you've got 10 million Facebook fans. How do you keep 10 million people engaged and happy and involved? Um, that be is a challenge of its own. So planning for success says we have a big, vibrant community. How do we feed that community? How do we make sure that we don't create a Facebook tombstone where we got a uh, you know a hundred thousand followers for a campaign and then we failed to engage them. We're seeing brands do this all over the place. They they run a campaign, they get 
10,000 followers or 5,000 followers or 100,000 followers, and then they just abandon them. Um, marketing suicide. So we really want to focus on um, this community building, conversation, and engagement. So next slide, Terry. So let's look at a company that, that we highlight in the book and a company that is doing some of these really intriguing, interesting new things. Um, you, everybody knows USA Today. Probably everybody on this call knows USA Today. And everybody also knows that publishing is really undergoing a radical shift in, in general um, and in specific uh, as it relates to digital and as it relates to social. And we love what USA Today uh, did related to um, really building this conversation and engagement with readers and moving traditional journalists onto the more cost-effective and reader-direct social media platforms. No easy feat. Um, all of us have been in, 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 in close environments where we have um, people who have done it. We've, you know, we've done it this way forever, and it works just fine. Why should we change? It was a big mountain to climb, and USA Today successfully did that. That's so the situation was, you know, skilled professionals with years of hard-earned experience used to this one-way communication. Um, how do you retrain um, a group of really talented, skilled people um, on social platforms for the future viability of the company? Um, USA Today had the vision to see that if they didn't make the leap into social, they were going to sink. Um, and uh, but they, they had this gap that they needed to close. So the solution was to sell the staff one person at a time. Now this was all done um, about a year and a half ago, so um, things have matured on since then. But that's how they how they approached this. Next slide. So what happened was. Um, Gene Sloan, who writes the cruise log, um, a, a good, solid, uh, skilled professional, longtime uh, USA Today uh, journalist, um, decided, you know, was willing to go into the um, blogging environment and create a community blog, a Twitter presence, and lo and behold, members and, and users started interacting with Gene. Um, members were re of the reading audience were interacting with each other. Now, this is one of the really fun things about social, that companies, when they get the light bulb go off, they say, wow, that's so cool. Not only are they interacting with us, they're interacting with one another. That, by the way, is a double-edged sword, but if it's a good thing, then they're interacting and they're happy and they're talking and it's vibrant, and um, that's the dream right now is to create a vibrant community. Next page. So the result was the topics to which readers created these meaningful relationships within the USA Today audience on site and off site, and the Twitter followers referred others to USA Today site, and they were able to actually begin to see measurable increase. Um, it sounds like a pretty common story today, but it was absolutely remarkable at the time. Again, this is a publishing is a hundred year old business model and you know or, or more and, and trying to turn that gigantic uh, battleship around was very was very complicated but through potent conversation and engagement with followers they were absolutely able to see um, measurable and favorable ROI traffic to the site and that was um, just just delighted them they they were so thrilled. And the story that we tell in the book is um, in first person, and they go in detail about how they organize Twitter sessions and blogging sessions internally, et cetera. Next slide, please. So um, this is their success. This is what it looks like, and I don't know if it still looks exactly like this, but this is what they uh, ended up sending over. Um, was, you know, all, all of this engagement. People started uploading their photos and commenting and being involved, et cetera. And now they have not just the cruise blog, but all of these other blogs um, that are out there for the, for, the, uh, for the readers to be involved in on social platforms. Next slide. 
So why is conversation important? We talked about it just a couple of minutes ago. Um, Carrie, did you kind of wrap this up? And um, then we're going to have plenty of time for questions. Sure. I mean, it's the wonderful thing about, you know, again, uh, reviews being the new advertising when it comes down to businesses, to grasp the importance of the customer and their opinions, and they share those opinions with others. And so, and those are conversations that are happening horizontally. So, you know, businesses really need to understand that and be part of that conversation in a meaningful way. So, you know, in our book, we do go through a variety of case stories, and as Beverly was mentioning earlier, in keeping with the thought of, of conversation and storytelling, rather than calling them case studies, we chose to call them case stories. So we include Mazda and their restart. I mean, they're a company that has done a great job, but they realized they had to take a step back and look at how to maybe redo or restart their social media marketing strategy, and we go into that in our book. DirecTV has done a great job with listening to their customers, and it's really helped their, their connections with their with their customers as well. And the Roxy Theater has done a fabulous job of actually regenerating and reinvigorating business along the Sunset Strip. And Beverly mentioned Wahoo's too. So we really hope you'll find some of these really a very amazing stories, jaw-dropping stories, and, and that's again in Chapter 5, but we have other chapters in the book that we wish we could go into here. You know, we just have some astounding uh, statistics, the way things are changing around the world when it comes to conversation that's happening everywhere. It's not stopping, and we really want to make it a positive thing for you and your businesses. So, to summarize... You know, the power of real-time social media marketing in the now lens is this um, high-level perspective on marketing in real time designed for executives, marketers, and leaders. Um, all these um, amazing, this global marketplace that we're all in that couldn't be more exciting and also more daunting all at the same time with the highlights that we talked about. A um, couple of things just to mention as well as we wrap up and get ready for questions. Um, again, on measurement, um, we know that ROI is the, the one of the m main things that customers and companies will say uh, right away is, you know, show us the ROI. We do attempt to to address this um, in the in the book, and also our case studies address this as well because we know that that's important in building the business case for the social platforms. Um, so we wanted to be sure that people understand that. And we also uh, really enjoyed on the, the end of the book writing about the next lens, looking into the future. And I'll just say a couple of things about social gaming and, virtu and virtual currencies as we close. Um, social, social gaming is um, absolutely on the rise, and m many, many people who um, would never in a million years identi self-identify as gamers are playing uh, farms on City Bell and everything else. So social gaming is one of the exciting things that we see coming in the future, and um, um, and we um, and what's really exciting about it is the virtual currency side of it. So we're happy to talk more about that in questions if people have have any questions. And Terry, did you want to say one final word, and then we'll open it up? Yeah. Yeah, uh, just going back to the, uh, that point about ROI, Beverly had mentioned EMC before, and in that case story, their um, internal transformation and adopting social media platforms within the enterprise actually did lead to a bump in their stock price. So we do have, have you know, and then we have the other stories about how it increased business as well. So, you know, there are definitely uh, stories in here about how it does increase the bottom line. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear. So and so the last uh last slide here. So um, we've been really very honored that some very important people have reviewed our book and felt that it was a very worthwhile effort and we're delighted to share that with you in the final slide. Um, and you can reach me on Twitter at Beverly Macy and Terry is at Terry Thompson one T-E-R-I, Thompson 1. My email is Beverly Macy at Gmail. I am Beverly Macy on every platform and on Facebook, LinkedIn, everywhere, so I'm 100% transparent and open and available. I would love to talk with you uh, at any time, answer questions, 
um, interact with you, speak for your organizations. I know Terry also. Um, and as we said to Gravity Summit, if you're in the Southern California area, we uh, we will be giving MC Hammer, legendary hip-hop artist and Twitter star MC Hammer, um, the Social Media Marketer of the Year Award presented by Access Hollywood um, at Gravity Summit at UCLA on February 22nd. You can go to gravitysummit.com to learn more about that or email me and happy to share that with you. And then I'll be happy to take any questions. Yeah, if you do need to get a hold of us, Mike will be able to get, uh, get you that information. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much. We had a ton of questions by Lady Terry. That was terrific. Um, before I get to the questions, I have a couple of brief uh, housekeeping things for everybody in line. First of all, um, we will be sending out a copy of the slides uh, following the event. We'll also be sending out a recording, a recording as well. Um, and, 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 you know, we really, we're going to send out email after so you can have all that stuff right in front of you. Uh, if you're looking to follow awareness, jump on any of these channels here. You can go to our Pound Awareness Inc. Web, our Pound Awareness Inc. webinar page on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at Awareness Inc. Visit our blogs at awarenessnetwork.com or you can participate in our, in our very large and growing fan page on, on uh, Facebook, which is Social Media Marketing Best Practices. Uh, so we really appreciate you checking those out. And if you're around next month, I'm really excited, uh, next week, I'm sorry, I'm really excited about this session. My good friend Andrew Davis, who's Right up the road from you in Boston, we're going to be getting together. He's the chief strategy officer and co-founder of a company called Tipping Point Labs, which has done some really interesting research um, in social media and some of the trends that are coming up now. So, so Andrew's going to be joining me. We're actually going to be doing it live together, so we'll be able to talk back and forth. It should be really exciting. That's next Thursday at 2 p.m. You can go to tinyurl.com slash jn27aware. And you're probably wondering why we picked that tiny kind of URL. It's because Andrew Davis, Tipping Point, Awareness Inc., all the other good ones were gone. So, sorry for yeah. a little strange. Um, but with that, I'd like to jump right into questions. And, and uh, Beverly Terry, I'm going to start off with, with the one that we got the most, um, the most variations of. And it has to do with social media metrics. We had questions about what are the top three, what are the most important metrics to measure, what, how do I measure ROI. We're going to ask them all as one big cluster, but what, the, what are the most important metrics that organizations should be looking at as they start to uh, implement social media? Terry, go ahead. <laughs> well, you want to look at what your uh, the activity is and the sentiment and the volume of what's happening in social media. You know, the sentiment meaning is that conversation positive, negative, neutral, or mixed, so then at least you know what the the aggregate of the tone is about your particular brand. And then you can also check into the frequency of how often are these posts taking place and, and the reach of these conversations as well. So that is the starting point uh, to listen and engage and then determine what your next step is going to be. And I'll, I'll say this. We could do a whole, a whole webinar on measurement because... So this is the holy grail right now. In, fact, in addition to conversation and engagement, the next, everybody who is a professional marketer learns you have to measure what you do, otherwise you're just doing it in a vacuum. And yet, getting our arms around measuring conversation versus measuring data is really complicated, and people are frustrated by it. Uh, you've got to get a baseline. You've got to start somewhere and have a baseline, and then from that baseline, you can begin to measure. So there's a lot of free tools that are out there, blog posts, social mention, um, a number of free tools that you can use. There's the um, kind of usual suspects now, visible technologies, maybe six, Crimson Hexagon, um, obviously awareness you guys offer. Um, some some metrics, um, and then on the enterprise side, we're seeing um, you know staff back end uh, IT kinds of measurement where the customer relationship management is measured for years anyway. So this is a huge topic. I'd be happy to talk to anybody at more length uh, uh, offline. So I'm going to push a little bit on that question just because I think some of the folks are yeah. live. What if you're just starting a program and you're just starting to get social media off the ground? Are there any specific, and I know we talked a little bit about reach, uh, which is definitely one of the important ones out there. Are there any other ones that you can suggest that folks should look at right from the, right from the get-go that they're really critical for them to start? You know, this is one thing that we should be looking at. This is another thing. And I know it might depend on the strategy of the organization. Um, right. 
So, you know, everybody's going to be tempted to say, how many Twitter followers do we have? How many YouTube su subscribers do we have? How many Facebook fans do we have? And we, you've got to do that. I mean, that's a reality, even though that's not necessarily the right, quote, right measurement, but we all have to start somewhere. A um, couple things that I say is, you know, uh, uh, look at what your competitors are doing, too. You know, measure them as well. Again, I, I'm going to go back to social mention. I really like social mention as a free tool and a place to start getting asked into measuring sentiment, velocity, and reach because it measures all the different platforms. Um, and you kind of have to play around with it a little bit to see what it is you're getting. You know, I'm going to go back to the old, I'm an old computer programmer. I'm going to go back to the old days when we would say that um, information is not intelligent. So we can gather a ton of information right now. There is so much metadata under all the social platforms, it's unbelievable. But we've got to be able to turn that into intelligence. So obviously you're going to track how many followers you have because that's just what's going to happen. Um, Terry, maybe you could talk about the, uh, your Audi uh, or your, uh, you know, the Super Bowl tracking and what you guys looked at in real time for a, an actual campaign. Sure. Uh, what we did is uh, we, in that case, we used uh, visible technologies to do the measurements, but it was really looking at frequency, sentiment, velocity, and volume because some of the conversation was spiking at certain times, and uh, and there are ways to measure that and. But, you know, for somebody just getting started, if, you know, if they're able to pay for services, then, then they definitely should include that as part of their outreach. And if they just try to uh, kind of investigate on their own, then there are the free tools like social mention. I recommend Rofier, and you put in your uh, a name of a company or a brand, and that will bring up the, the social conversation going on about that. But you, it's really, you can't get away from what the sentiment is and what the, the volume is and the velocity. I mean, that is just central to measuring conversation about your brand. I don't think you can get away with, uh, without doing that. So is, have you guys found that sentiment is, is more really of, a, of an art than a science? Um, Absolutely. And, and why is that? Because somebody can say, oh, thanks. And yeah. well, thanks. And um, so artificial intelligence right now is being built into the algorithms inside of the, of, of the really sophisticated measurement companies because we've got to be able to measure sarcasm and nuance and language nuance. Absolutely. Um, there's, a, there's a great example of a, of a brand that used, um, uh, they do ex automatic expense accounting and their CEO, um, their, their campaign said, Expense reports suck, and that was because they had a new way to do it. But expense reports suck came out as negative sentiment in all of their measurements, but it wasn't negative. It was a ton of buzz. So it was a very fun kind of uh, example of how, how this is, you know, we're really parsing language right now. Yeah. Yeah, and, and to that point, too, Mike, um, there are some measurement tools that try to, if, you're, if your hashtag or your main brand word is within the body of a tweet or a status, they try to measure maybe the 10 words before it and the 10 words after to try to gauge what that sentiment is, but sometimes that still doesn't work. For instance, there was a tweet about Levi's, and the tweet was, thanks for taking my favorite brand off the market. You know, obviously that's a snarky comment, and that, so, but it can be measured a different way if not if the human yeah. element is not combined with the technical element. That's a good point. I think it's actually a good segue to the next most popular question that we got. Now, a ton of people asked about this, and, and again, different variations. So I'm not gonna not gonna call out anybody on Twitter and uh, or on WebEx that, that asked this one, but a lot of people are asking about how do you get buy-in for social programs that. You know, they're, they're in the process of, of either planning something out or they're about to implement, you know, social media at their company, and they're getting a lot of pushback either with their peers or, or, their, or the executives that they work for. And they're wondering, how do you get buy-in? How do you prove the value of what's going on in social media so that people are, are, are more open to adopting it? Well, again, it, that, what a great question because isn't that, uh, you know, as I said in the very beginning, uh, social media, turns out, is not for the faint of heart, okay? These are really big and deep questions, and they go to the fundamental core of what businesses are doing and what they're all about. We, you, we included um, EMC for a particular reason. 
EMC did not have buy-in. It is a technology company. It is really the smartest guys in the room kind of a company. It's been around for a really long time. They had a, a gigantic battle that, that, that they had to undertake internally. They were very open about that, about uh, their journey. Um, they published the white paper. Much of that white paper is uh, reproduced in our book. But it is exactly to that question, how did they get buy-in? How did they do one department at a time, et cetera? In the case of USA Today, it was one journalist at a time. They literally had to go start convincing people. Anybody here who is a Twitter or Facebook user in a business environment knows that there is an aha moment that you have where you go, oh, I get it now why this is so big. But it's hard to quantify and explain. So this is not a good answer, I know, because we want a really good answer that's very compact and, and pat and we can hand off to upper management. But it doesn't work that way. So we try to address that in a number of different, uh, in a number of different scenarios. Go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, excuse me. Now one of the things, uh, that I find is really important and that we share with people is that, you know, if you're trying to get the buy-in, you know, prepare your proposal and look at what the value is of buying in for each department. I mean, I don't, some of you have small businesses, some of you have large corporations. But what is the value, meaning both in, in, uh, personnel hours and also in actual dollars saved? Like for, for instance, for, uh, you know, customer service. Could you respond better to inquiries or the complaints and then also reduce the cost to your phone banks or actually improve your product? And also, what are your, you know, put down what your competition is doing because your competition could already be in social media. And, and then what happens if you don't? And if you can look at it to find those three points, at least get you an audience and possibly get you the ear of your upper executive to start paying attention because that's part of it. Part of it is paying attention. Then the other part that's really helpful is to propose. And sometimes, you know, having worked in media, it's sometimes hard to sell ideas. But if it's say, if you say, this is a test. Let's do a test. Or let's have an education day, a social media education day. We also found that to be very helpful for buy-in. Because then it gets everybody starting to think the same way. Because this is new for everybody. And uh, that's, those points can be helpful in selling in internally. And that's uh, very well said. Yeah, that's okay. terrific. And, and what I heard from, from both of you, there were a couple, couple things that came out. One was around metrics. Um, you, know, you both said you've got to kind of prove the value. And the second thing was around change. And, you know, Debbie, you talked about EMC and how, you know, they had to adopt to new things and were very, you know, open about how they how they went through that change process. Would you like to talk about that a little more? I think, you know, when companies start to change, one of the big things they look at is what are the pros and cons of being too open in the public eye? And I think that's a challenge for a lot of, especially bigger kind of older organizations to figure out, you know, how open should we be, how close should we be. And I think it's a really interesting point, especially for people that are just starting out in social media or trying to get their company to start out in social media, um, to really understand the, the intricacies of that. Sure, I'd be happy to. Let me just say that um, uh, a couple of things else about, um, you know, uh, how do we how do we prove this to management, et cetera. If you're in a large organization, you're probably already doing reputation monitoring and reputation management, and a lot of times that's the right place for you to start with social because this fits right into keeping your finger on the pulse. You don't have to do anything, but you can start listening to the social channels, and that is often the right place to begin versus trying to throw up Facebook pages and get Twitter handles going really fast. Um, so I just wanted to say that. Related to the openness value or, or not value, you know, this is a big, this is also a very good question. Um, EMC, again, you know, technology companies are highly competitive and highly regulated, and it's a public company. So they have all of those things going on that many, many, many other companies have as well, and yet they chose to be open. So did Kodak. You can search on Kodak, Kodak's social media ma marketing policy, and you can find it on Google. You can find Cisco's social media marketing policy on Google. You can find EMC. The reason they all did this is because they, you know, they have thought it through. They've decided that this is a change management process that they want to undertake. They don't want to be foolish about it. They don't want to be 
um, really really about it, and they want to share how they thought it through with others. Um, so that's the that's the upside of being open is that you're not alone, and there's other great big companies that are doing the same thing. The downside, of course, is that if you haven't thought this through, you know, you would not implement Six Sigma uh, all overnight. You would not implement SAP overnight. You would not implement Salesforce.com overnight. You would think these things through. You've got to do the same thing with social. And um, that's part of what I do with uh, Fortune 500 companies. I do corporate education and strategic planning and, and development, and so does Terry. And that's what we try to highlight in Gravity Summit. This is not, um, we're not social today and now we're social tomorrow. No, not going to happen. Excellent. Well, that's, that really, I know we're, 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 uh, we're about three minutes over, and I want to just really thank you from, from, for everybody in the line for uh, for being here and for taking some time with us today. The questions that came in for everybody that's, that's remaining that we didn't get to, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get everything together. We're going to send them over to Beverly and Terry. Uh, we're going to first pick the winners of the books. Um, we'll do that after the session, so I have no announcements to make on that right now. Uh, but after we'll let Beverly and Terry pick the, the winners, and we'll get back to the ASAP on who won. We'll also be making the slides for recording, uh, as well as, um, as, as well as the, uh, any of the Q&A to come back that we weren't able to get to that that Beverly and Terry didn't have time to answer we'll also make that available to you after. So you get a follow-up email from us very soon. Um, but Beverly and Terry, I just want to say thanks again. It was terrific. Uh, we got a lot out of the session. We really appreciate your time, and uh, hope you can come back again soon. Thank you so much. Thanks for the opportunity. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.